Evernote has been with me for 16 years this year, and it has been a constant companion over those years. It's helped me be when I was a teacher, it's helped me to run my business, and today it manages all my client notes. It's a phenomenal tool. And apart from the dark days of 2018-19, when Evernote was rebuilding from the foundations up, and I have to confess there was a moment when I considered switching all in to Apple Notes, I have to say, today, Evernote is better than ever. Now today I want to share with you how I actually use Evernote on a daily basis, but I also want to show you why Evernote is so good. Now before we start, let me just give you my criteria for a solid notes app. Now I know we will all be different here, but these are just my criteria. First up, it wants to use natural language. I don't want to waste my time learning special writing formats like Markdown or some other kind of HTML code. I haven't got the time to learn that. It's not a priority in my life. Doesn't mean to say that it isn't a priority in your life. Secondly, I just want to be able to drag and drop stuff into it. Just random stuff like PDFs and images and anything like that. Now, apps like OneNote, Evernote, Apple Notes, and I believe Notion, all allow you to do that. So those, to me, are the perfect applications. Text-based applications are just a little bit too limited for my needs, and also these more complex ones, which, well, I think they're complex, things like Obsidian and some of the other ones that are built around personal knowledge management systems, you know, from the university research days, that those are just beyond me. I haven't got the time or the inclination to learn how to use those. But that's one of the powerful benefits of using Evernote in my case, because I've been using it for 16 years. I've been through the good times, I've been through the bad times, and I'm still using it. And Evernote, today, since Bending Spoons took over, have made it into a solid app. And I just want to go through a few of the things that I use on a daily basis. Okay, so Evernote has this little feature called the Scratch Pad. I think I've talked about Scratch Pads recently. Now, the idea behind the scratch pad is this is where you can just throw in random notes. And boy, do I use this more often than I think I did. Now, the truth is, I used to use Apple Notes' Quick Notes for this, but then I realized that since Evernote have updated their mobile application, now it's so easy just to open up my Evernote app, tap and type, or in my case, dictate when I'm on my phone, and I can throw in random thoughts, ideas, but more importantly, it's where I usually throw in my content ideas. I just think it's a phenomenal little thing. It's simple, it's easy, and it's always there, but it makes it it's so easy then to convert that into a note, or in my case, I usually just copy and paste it and add it to my content ideas note. So that's the, the, the scratch pad that's on the home screen of all Evernote devices. Next up is Evernote Tasks. Now, I'm a Todoist user. I use that every day for my general task management system. I also use a Franklin Planner to keep me focused on the day. That's when I write down my most important tasks for the day. But there are certain things that I do, like meetings, or particularly when I'm doing my coaching calls, while I'm on the call, I'm taking notes, and then I write a feedback that goes out to the client after the call. And it always contains a little bit of homework. So during the call, I'm like taking notes, because I may have like, for example, tomorrow I have about six coaching calls, I'm not going to remember all of those when I sit down to write the feedback, so I need a place for this. But I also need to know when I've written feedback and when I haven't written feedback. So this is how I use Evernote tasks. Now the great thing about this is tasks can be pinned to your home screen, which is a new feature. Well, it's two or three years old in Evernote. And it's phenomenal because I can keep all records, everything I need to know right there, including my shortcuts, including the feedback that I need to write. Now I should point out that I only use Evernote tasks for meetings where I have something to do, I'll quickly add a little checkbox so that it comes up on my task list, and also for my coaching clients. But they've found this to be phenomenal because prior to Evernote tasks, 
I just used to go into my coaching client list and because I have it set up for modified, the ones that I hadn't written feedback for was usually at the top. But it was a bit of a guessing game. Now it's certain. There's a def def definitive way of knowing when I've written feedback and when I haven't. So now I don't miss writing my feedback. So I just love Evernote tasks. I would never consider using Evernote tasks as my main task management system. There are too many bells and whistles and things would just get in the way and it I have looked into setting up the time sector system in Evernote tasks and I've just never been able to make it work smoothly. But that's just one of the things that I do use Evernote tasks for, which is to remind me that there is something for me to do, either from a coaching client call or from a meeting that I might have with somebody I'm working with. Evernote Spaces. Now Evernote Spaces is relatively new. Now it's been in the business version of Evernote for some time, but recently Bending Spoons have launched their Spaces uh, feature into the whole mainstream. I'm not sure if you get this in the free version, but if you're using the personal or the professional version, you do get Spaces. Now I've always been a bit suspect of Spaces, but I now understand how they work and I find it very useful. Now traditionally Evernote has three levels of organization. We have stacks, notebooks and notes. Now this is very similar to Microsoft OneNote which has notebooks, sections and pages and Apple Notes will give you folders, subfolders and notes. So there's usually three levels of organization in most notes apps. Now with Evernote what they did was you could share a notebook, you could obviously share a note but you've never been able to share a stack. However, with Evernote Spaces, you can create a space with multiple notebooks, if you wish, and share that space. Now, this is ideal for somebody like me who has a small team of people working behind the scenes with me, and I can set up a project in Spaces and share that. So this would be a complicated project, not a small, easy project to do. But if I have a multiple project system, I can then share that with my team. Now, the way I'm using Spaces at the moment is just where I can keep all my online courses. So all the online courses that I do have an Evernote note or a notebook for the bigger courses. And rather than trying to keep all that together in a space which just upsets my organization of Evernote, then I can now keep this all in spaces. And then if I need to and share this with my marketing manager, for example, I can just throw that, just share this space with her and she can get on and do her part of the work. So Evernote Spaces is super simple. If you want to learn more about Evernote Spaces, I would suggest looking at their 101 video on YouTube, which I'll put a link to in the show notes. It is really quite useful because, mainly because of the sharing function, but also because you can pin notes, individual notes within that space, which makes it so much easier to get to your note that you need to get to. Now, I know I'm always going to be asked the question, well, how do you organize your Evernote? Well, I'm very loose with my organization because Evernote search is so powerful. I very, very rarely need to go into a specific notebook or search for a specific note the manual way. I always use Command J on a Mac. I don't know what this is in Windows, but a Command J on Mac brings up a search box, I can type in the search name and boom, that note will come up. It's a phenomenal little tool and I use this all the time when I'm navigating in Evernote. But the main uses for Evernote is just essentially for keeping my projects together, but I also have a system that I call GAPRA. GAPRA is Goals, Areas, Projects, Resources and Archive. Now Archive is for pretty much everything and it's totally disorganized. I'm not interested in wasting time organizing it because it's an archive. I can search it. I don't need it to be beautifully organized. I have my projects, which I am generally quite good at keeping up to date, but it doesn't matter if it's not because, you know, I can update this once a month or once every quarter, just clean it up. But I keep all my projects in there. Now, if you've followed my videos for a while, you know that all my projects start on paper, something like this. Once I finish writing my thoughts out, how I want to structure the project, then I will scan this into Evernote. By the way, Evernote has a built-in scanner on your mobile app. And then I will pull out the main parts of the project and I will then 
put my next actions at the top and then links to any documents relevant to that project. It's a really simple structure. It's never let me down. I don't find that I'm looking for stuff. I'm certainly not wasting a lot of time trying to keep it all beautiful and clean and tight, which to me is just a, just a waste of time because a project, once it's done, it's done. It moves on. It gets archived and gets moved on. So I use the goals is for where I'm tracking data. So right now when I was writing Your Time Your Way book, I cut down on my exercise, probably didn't take much care of what I was eating, gained a few pounds and now's the time to lose that weight. So I'm tracking my weekly weight in Evernote in my goals section. Uh, I can track all sorts of things in there such as if I've got a savings goal or whatever. So this is my area for tracking data. My areas of focus are my eight areas of focus. I've covered those numerous times. If you want to learn more about my areas of focus, again, I'll put a note down below. Then we have projects. Projects obviously take care of all the projects that I'm currently working on. And then we have the resources. Now resources is the catch-all. It's for everything. It's for my hobbies, interests, business related stuff. My coaching client list is in there. Everything that's not a project, an area of focus or a goal is basically going to be in my resources area. And it's great because again, I can search for notebooks, I can search for individual notes. It's superb. It's brilliant, brilliant place just to dump stuff. I even have my wine list there. So any bottle of wine that we've had that we enjoy, I'll take a picture of it, throw it into my wine list. And then we have my archive. Now, the way I organize my archive is by year. There's some things that don't fit into that. There may be some project notebooks which just fall below, and that's really what's in there. I don't really care how that's organized, but for individual notes, I do generally have archive and then the year, so then I know where, you know, roughly where it is, and it just keeps it a little bit structured, but it's not something that I'm overthinking. Again, largely because of the time that's required to maintain a beautifully organized note system. We never used to do that. Why do we need to do that today? Particularly when your computer will search or the application Evernote search is just phenomenal. And the final part, Evernote Web Clipper. Now, what can I say? I have seen so many competitors of Evernote trying to replicate the Web Clipper and have failed miserably every single time. Apple Notes, you would have thought, with Safari would be brilliant. Pfft, terrible. Notion, never really got it right. And I remember when Notion first came out around about 2017, 18, everyone was saying, when are you gonna bring out the Web Clipper? When are you gonna bring out the Web Clipper? And they eventually did, and it was horrible. Evernote got it right so long ago and it is just phenomenal. Any website, I can just click the, web, the little Evernote icon in the top and it will then give me a few options, whether I want the simplified article, the full article, I want to take a screenshot and it just syncs directly to my inbox. I love it, I use it all the time, I dump stuff in there and I know and I trust that it's always going to be there. And that's the other element of anything like that. You've got to trust it. And I, I mean, people talk about Evernote's web, legendary web clipper. And it is. It's just phenomenal. So I know with certainty that whatever I clip from the web clipper is going to be in my inbox when I need it. And that's it. So this is the reason why I stick with Evernote. I absolutely love it. Evernote is phenomenal. Bending spoons are doing some amazing things there. One caveat, if you hear Evernote talking about AI, kind of take that with a bit of a pinch of salt. I keep trying it, testing it to see what it does, and it just doesn't work. I don't know why. I mean, it's just laggy, it's slow, it doesn't seem to understand what you're asking it to do, even though I'm using AI quite often, like I use Claude rather than GPT, but the same thing, it doesn't understand prompts. So maybe that's something that Bending Spoons are working on. Maybe AI is going to become useful. It would be nice to be able to just click a button and it will summarize any notes that you've made and just put it in a small little box at the top, very much like the way that uh, Reader by Readwise works, gives you a summary at the top. That would be quite nice, so you can just quickly scan those notes. At the moment, I've not been able to get it to work. Perhaps there may be a bug in my particular Evernote, and hopefully that will start working soon. But apart from that, Evernote is phenomenal. And to be fair, I'm still a bit on the 
on the fence with AI. I haven't found a great use for it yet, apart from what everyone else is using it for. Yeah, right, just basically it summarizes, it searches stuff for you. Yeah, very useful, but not game changing. Okay, so that's it. I wanted to just talk about Evernote for a while. I haven't done it for, for a very long time, but I just wanted to share with you exactly why I think Evernote is such a phenomenal tool. Sure, it's expensive, but you get what you pay for. You can use cheap free apps if you wish, and most of them will do a very, very good job. Evernote is on another level, and that's what you're paying for. People don't like to pay for apps, and that's fine. That's your choice. I'm perfectly happy paying, I think it's $99 a year. So I'm perfectly happy paying that. It's not going to break the bank, but it certainly is giving me great, if fantastic value for money. Thanks very much for watching this video. If you want to learn more, by the way, about GAPRA, then this video up here is the one to watch next.